Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Heroes and Henchmen. In the game Heroes and Henchmen, you're going to be playing as bad guys, besieging uh, uh, the good guys' different prisons and maybe the headquarters and whatnot, and you're basically just trying to cause some havoc. Now, it is a game for one to four players. It takes about 60 to 75 minutes to play the game, and it's for ages 12 and up. And in the game, you're basically going to be making a bunch of uh, cards, a bunch of different locations, a bunch of uh, powers, and of course, guards and heroes to deal with, and then obstacles that will get in your way. Every round's going to have events and stuff like that that's going to happen, and you're just going to try and get the most villain points at the end of the game to become the biggest villain of all. The rest of everybody else is just going to be henchmen. It's a partially cooperative game, partially competitive game. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So here's villains and henchmen, everything you're going to be in the game. So first of all, you're going to be getting an event deck, which is going to signify what's going to happen at the end of every single round. You get the villain deck, which of these are going to be cards you'll be using, such as attacking, defending, um, and of course, power surging. These will let you buy different powers, which are going to be in power decks A and power decks B. These things are the things you'll acquire throughout the game. And you can also get powers level one and then level two. You have player boards here, along with the archetype deck, which are the different villains you can go ahead and choose from, whether you want to be a mad scientist or the goons themselves. You're going to have obstacles to deal with too as you're trying to besiege the hero's base. These are the obstacles you have to deal with and how they're going to be surpassed is going to be based on each card. Guard decks of course will pop out and the eyeballs are going to represent what's going to happen as they spawn as well as different events that could occur every turn with these guys on the field. And finally you have the hero deck. You might be fighting against the, uh, the speedster or the leader or even the super soldier. Tons of other guys too. The powerhouse. These guys all have different unique abilities as well and usually will be involved in the scenarios in some way. This game here comes with four scenarios. There might be more, there might be less in the uh, Kickstarter, I'm not exactly sure, but what I have is four and they're basically going to be uh, different locations, whether it be a, uh, a prison on the space station or the superhero uh, the, the super prison or the military compound and finally the hero headquarters. These are all prisons that you're trying to basically mess up, destroy, whether it be freeing your other henchmen or however you want to look at it. Uh, but these are the different scenarios you can choose once you go ahead and select one of these guys here and an arc hero. Set it, or arc type, you can go ahead and set it on your character board and get your character board and your cards. And that's pretty much what you're going to be getting other than this full board here, the rule book, and of course the box. In villains and henchmen, you're going to choose one of two different villains. You get to draw two from a stack of them and then you're going to look at them and select which one you want. I went ahead and picked the goons. They all have their own unique abilities. Like this one can have five total powers as opposed to four with the drawback that you can never have a power that goes to level two. Generally to make a power go to level two you have to have the first version and then have a secondary version as well. Uh, and then you'd put it at the top of your board. You're simply going to put your archetype on the archetype space of your board. Draw five cards from the villain deck and the five cards are going to resemble defense, power surges, and of course attacking, which you'll be using throughout the game to either buy powers, uh, destroy defense, defenses, destroy, defeat guards, and defeat heroes. Uh, then you're also going to go ahead and set up one of the chosen settings. Now this is the super prison, this is the one I chose, uh, and it tells you for how many players and what you're going to spawn. So if it's, it's a zero hero spawn, one random guard for each player, so if you're playing three players, you get three guards, one random obstacle for each player, so same thing, and then add the power dampener special events deck to the event deck. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, power dampeners. And this one here says each player must discard a power card from their highest level power. If a power has a tie for the highest level power, they can choose which to discard. Bank cards can disc um, bank cards can uh, discard this way into the defeat pile. Now this uh, event also has special rules. For two uh, power surges, you can discard a card from the defeat pile. And for three, you can acquire one from the defeat pile, which you want to do. Because if there's ever ten powers in the defeat pile, we lose. And it, we win if somebody has banked, or all together we've banked five power, five power surges and defeated either the healer or the super spy in the victory pile. Uh, players cannot bank cards in the victory pile while there's obstacles in place. So you have to destroy obstacles first before you can do the victory pile. All events have, all, all settings have different stuff that go on with them. This is one specific one which I'll be showing in the little walkthrough. Um, but after that, it's pretty simple. You're going to look at your uh, uh, turns, your, your little uh, player board here. And it shows you bank defenses, bank power surges, villain points, which are points you're going to be scoring as you defeat guards and heroes, as well as powers. You can have up to four of them, generally speaking. Uh, the first level powers are their, what their cost is, second level powers their cost. You can use victory points or power surges to buy them. And then we have the phases, the refresh phases. Everything is basically going to untap. You're going to check to see if there's any heroes or guards on the field. If there isn't, choose two guards or a hero to put into play. Refresh powers and targets, which means basically 
turn them from the side upward, and then that means you can use them again this turn. You also might turn obstacles to the side to avoid using their, uh, the, the, avoid the powers that happen on their, on the, uh, on the obstacles. Then you're gonna discard banked defense cards. Banked defense cards only last for an entire turn of play. After everybody's taken their turn, on your turn you discard them all. Bank cards will be usually used to uh, stop yourself from having to discard cards, which is basically the idea of taking damage. Then you go to the action phase, which is going to be able to attack targets with cards in your hand, bank any defense or power surges you want, buy powers with either power surges or with um, victory points, and then redraw up to five. Finally, the events happen. You're gonna play an event card from the event deck here. Different things happen. Sometimes it'll be like triggering all the um, eyeball abilities on all the characters. Those are pretty nasty, making you discards and whatnot, discard cards and whatnot. Then you're going to recur abilities, and finally, cycle powers. All those powers on the boards that you do not need. Uh, sorry, that, you, that were not bought. If there was not one bought in each area, you're gonna slide them all to the side, remove one, and add a new one. So there's always new powers being added. Every player is going to do this in turn order until one of the victory conditions is met or or, or defeat conditions is met depending on how good you are at the game whoever has the most villain points at the end is the major villain and everybody else becomes the henchman but really it's also a cooperative game because if you lose you lose together anyway let me show you how to get a couple turns how to play and what you can do on your turn and how to achieve victory in villains and henchmen so we went ahead and set it up for two players, and we actually have the event already set up. The setting, the super prison is what we're going to be using. We don't need the extra special event cards, which is for the whole breach, as well as the different other things that you can be using for different settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move these aside. Uh, we have, though, included these power dampeners that are going to go into the event deck, and it will tell you how all these cards are going to be added, and you would simply, I think, shuffle these guys in. Um, now remember, it's important that these things are not drawn, because as they're drawn, players are going to lose powers, and when that happens, if there's 10 banked in the defeat pile, game is over. We're trying to achieve victory, which is by defeating the healer or the super spy in the victory pile, and all around having five power surges between the two different players. But remember, with objectives, or I mean obstacles in play, you're not going to be able to bank victory hero uh, heroes into the victory pile, so that you need to defeat these first. And uh, that being said, everybody's going to have five cards. They've each chosen a hero. They have the goons and the lunatic. And the lunatic says whenever he defeats or she defeats a hero or an obstacle, you get to defeat a guard for free, but whenever she has to discard, she has to discard randomly. And this character, like I said before, can have five powers as opposed to four powers, but can't have a uh, double power, which gives her level two. Nevertheless, they each have five cards. They can kind of look at it or tell each other what cards they have in their hands that they want. It is somewhat cooperative, somewhat competitive. So that will be up to you how seriously you want to take the competitive nature of the game. Uh, the next thing you want to also make sure you do is go ahead and check the uh, setup. Uh, so for, inst for instance, there's going to be no heroes, one random guard for each player in the game. So there's two here. And of course, you're also going to be adding one random obstacle for each player. Now at the start of the game until it becomes the next player, the first player's turn once again, Basically, all of these cards are considered um, blank, so nothing is going to happen with them. You can defeat them with ease and whatnot, so that is nice. And then, of course, you're also going to add uh, the different powers to the uh, power decks. Now, if it's a two-player game, you only choose one of the two decks, and if it's a three or a four, you can choose both. And you're going to need one, two, three, and I believe um, just, the, just these three, I think. Just these three is what you're going to need. But at the end of a round, of course, this will push across, and you'll add a new one down. So you just have these three out and they are available for purchase right now these are able, able to be destroyed and these guys can be uh, knocked out or KO'd now to begin the game we'll simply have this guy go first and this is the goon and he has quite a few things he can do we're gonna check for heroes and guards which is not relevant in this first portion of the game refresh any of the powers and or targets that would be turned sideways which also is not needed and discard any bank defenses so we're basically ignoring that whole refresh phase of the first portion of the game and then we're going to move to attacking targets. Targets have health and they have victory points. Uh, these guys over here will also have health, but health is gonna be regulated to uh, life points equals uh, attacking with actual attack. And then of course, these uh, defenses here are obstacles. This says you need four attacks. This one says you need four power surges. So it's up to you how you wanna play cards. When you play a card to attack something, you simply put this card underneath one of the things you want to attack. So remember, you can't bank any of these uh, heroes or anything into the victory pile until we defeat all the obstacles. So these are important to, to, to defeat. However, they don't give us villain points. These villain points are important because they will give you the uh, competitive achievement of being the biggest, baddest bad guy. 
Um, so what do we want to do here? So we have two power surges, um, which we can save to buy powers. I think we'll do that. So we're going to go ahead and use this one attack here. And this attack can hit this guard. One attack for one health is going to defeat the guard, and the guard will go into the villain points. And remember, villain points can be used as power surges as well. Uh, you're going to go ahead and discard the attack card that was used, choosing then to go ahead and bank any power surges and or defenses you so choose. I'll go ahead and bank the two defenses, and then I can use two power surge to buy one of these three power-ups. This one here says every turn I can tap to deal one damage to a target. This one here lets me discard all my attack damage uh, attack to basically make damage for each power surge. So I can do I can do multiple damages without actually having to use the cards in my hand uh, on the cards. It's a very useful card. And this one here says you uh, require one less card to defeat obstacles. This is very important for this specific uh, setting, so I'm going to take this card easily without even thinking about it, discarding two of these power surges. Then after that I'm going to redraw my hand. I have no cards in my hand, so I get to redraw up to five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. After I've done that, then we go on to the events phase where I play an event card. I would simply take one of these guys here and flip it over, and it says trigger all the eyeball abilities possessed by heroes in play. If there's no heroes in play, then the top card of the hero, and then add the top deck of the hero card a deck, and then heroes triggered by this effect, all players. Okay, so basically flip this guy over, and um, there, now he's revealed. This is a uh, uh, when an eyeball is revealed, that basically means it happens instantly and to the player that it is being flipped that it is being flipped on. So this says reveal your hand. So this guy's gonna have to reveal his hand and discard any attack cards from it. So he would actually have to discard these two attack cards because of that event. Not so nice. However, when you use defensive cards that you have stashed, you can actually use these in place of discarding, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, so that is going to be very beneficial. And then after that, the event is over. You move on to the next portion, which is going to be recur um, any abilities, basically any abilities that have like a little uh, circle effect, which means continuous that happens every turn would begin to effect, and cycle powers. So we would take this, move them across, and add one. If there's already three there, you actually get rid of one and add a new one. So you're always going to have at least one new power every turn. And then the next player is going to get to go. Remember, she can defeat a uh, hero or an obstacle, and it will instantly defeat a guard for her, which is very, very nice. So, well, let's go ahead and see. You can check the heroes and guards. Nothing you have to, you don't have to worry about anything right now. Then, uh, we basically ignore the refresh phase. We do our actions. So, we're going to take these guys here. Uh, this is a defense, which we'll probably just go ahead and stash. We have power surges. So, we can actually take these four power surges and knock out this obstacle. It's very useful to do so. These will go into the discard pile. Uh, we can't buy powers, because we used our, our power surges, we can go ahead and redraw back up to five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then we can go ahead and play the event card, see what happens. Mostly, most of the time it's bad. However, it could be good sometimes. Starting with the uh, active player, all players may immediately refresh all exhausted archetype cards. Sometimes uh, these archetype cards will be um, tapped, which means they've been used, and this card will actually allow them to untap. These two don't do that, but if it did, it would be nice. Or they can, uh, they may use one power now, uh, at no cost. Well, this guy doesn't have anything, and this guy's a passive power. So this is kind of a neutral card, which is just fine, right? Um, play the event card, recur any abilities, cycle all the powers, uh, and that is it. We'll go on to the next player. And now this is when these things start taking place. Now the eyeballs, once they've been triggered, they've been put into play, they've been triggered, they're done with. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Uh, these things have actually a thing called bypass. You can spend a power surge, and then you can tap any... Uh, 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 you can tap this dude, so he basically can't do anything, but you have to have one of these three powers. And this thing here is the little R, it's a reaction. Discard the first uh, defense card played each turn without applying its effects. So whenever defense is played, it's going to be enacted. Normally, um, if there was one card that required four defense, so you play it on it, that would actually stop one of them. So tapping this card for a power surge could be beneficial because it ignores this. However, at the end of the phase, it's going to uh, basically bring this guy back into play. Or, or actually, it'll be the beginning of the next player's turn or bring back into play. Anyway, the only way heroes and guards are going to get refreshed is if there is none at the beginning of a turn. If that happens, one player can choose to either take two guards or to take one hero and put into play. That way, they are always going to be at least one hero or two guards in play, depending on what you guys choose. And the event deck is also what is going to spawn them. So, uh, once again, he's going to go ahead and look and see what he's got here. He's got three defenses, four defenses, and a power surge, which is most likely... Oh, I'm going to discard this defense. He's, uh, that's gone now. Um, so what does he want to do? Maybe he is going to play these four defenses in his stack here to defend
defend himself. He's got this power surge. I think he'll just go ahead and hold that there for now so they can buy power later. He doesn't have anything else he can really do. He can't really kill these guys, and this requires a power as well. Uh, this requires attack as well, and he needs two power surges for these guys, so he's going to stop all that and be done. He'll redrop to five. Hopefully, he'll get another power surge. Two attacks, a defense, a defense, and an attack. Nope, no power surge. You have to kill something to get a victory point to use. Then let's go see an event. Flip it over. What's this one say? All right, redirect the next two attack cards. Play to a uh, heroic defender. And when heroic defender has two attack cards banked on it, discard this card. So it basically stays in play. And whenever somebody plays an attack card on these guys here, instead of going to these guys, it'll go to him until two of them are on, on this guy here, and then it'll be discarded. So it kind of sucks in all the attacks from the villains, the good villains, of course. And uh, that, uh, that's going to stay in play. That's done. Uh, recurring abilities, cycle through the powers. So this guy go go. We'll add a new one here, and play will continue. Fairly simple, right? All the powers do different things. If you have both decks, they all have different types of powers. These, all these different obstacles are going to do different things. For instance, that one stops uh, defenses from being played. Other ones, like this one here, says you play the top card of the obstacle whole deck when this comes into play, or obstacle discard power comes into play. Putting this one into play. Uh, what else do you got here? Uh, this one says each player has to discard one card from their hand, starting with the player active player, and then at the end of every turn, a player has to discard a card. All these are basically obstacles, and they're nasty. And the only way to bank the hero cards into the victory pile, which is what you need to do, is if you get rid of all of the obstacles. So all the obstacles that are here are into the graveyard. And remember, don't ever forget about the victory condition. It's very important. The healer or the super spy is what's needed. And luckily, this is the super spy. So if there was no locations, and this was in the victory pile after we defeated it, then we would actually go ahead and check to see if we have all the power surges we needed and we could then win the game. It sounds easier than it actually is. Also to note too, whenever you have to lose a card from the victory pile, if there isn't one, you lose a card from the power deck because once these, this power deck runs out of cards, the game is going to end. And oh, it's another way basically the game's going to end other than the uh, defeat. And also in this specific event, there's going to be those dampener cards that basically say, uh, let's see if I can find one really quick here. Here's one. This one says each player has to discard at least one power. So the power that this guy gained would go into here. Everyone else would do the same thing. And if there was ever 10 in here, the game would also end. So that's another way the game can end via these cards in the event deck. Uh, and that is the basic idea of the game. You can also lose cards from the uh, villain points area and your board as well. And if you don't have anything, you have to worry about it that much. But uh, yeah, that is the idea. So let's come up and talk about villains and henchmen. So a couple caveats before we get into the review. The first thing is, remember when I said about two powers. So once you get the first power, that is going to give you the level one ability. And then if you acquire another one of the same type, that will give you a level two power from that ability. It will cost two spaces, but you're going to do something really powerful. For instance, this one just says, take one damage and or one defense card from the villain discard pile. Just by using that, every turn you're going to do that. And then of course the lower one, which is the more powerful, Powerful one says if you spend a power surge you can bypass any obstacle on your turn just by simply using that one card so either one is pretty good you can utilize either ability um, if you if you would like now um, this also remember it only four powers also the guards guards are generally going to come out they're going to discard a card from your hand or something like that and that's normally what they're going to do sometimes they'll have reactions where if you attack them they, you'll have to discard the first attack punch there's a couple other interesting ones as well but they're mainly just to kind of limit your hand size Heroes, however, do a bunch of different things. You got healers and you got uh, tanks. This guy makes you discard three cards from your hand. He's really mean. When you when you draw five, you have to discard three instantly. And if you're playing one of the characters like the Lunatic, you have to discard three at random. Ooh, that's very very painful. Uh, this card, this card says uh, this guy says discard the top card of the power deck of each power deck, and then discard one victory card, which means you're gonna have to use uh, defense cards in order to stop that from happening. And to get rid of when you have a when you have a guy or a character or something like that try and remove a card from a victory pile the only way you can stop that is by discarding one defense for each player in the game accumulatively otherwise you will lose that card which is so so vital you need to have that card or you'll lose the game if you don't have the available victory conditions uh, the tactician discard the top card of each power deck then discard a victory card uh, this one unblockable discard your hand and draw three cards Ooh, uh, discard the first attack card played each turn without applying its effects. So all these guys do different things. Some of them will remove damaging ability of uh, effects on cards and whatnot. And then obstacle decks are basically a nuisance. They are things that are going to stay in play. There's the obstacles that are going to bring obstacles back. Um, 
kind of irritating. The event decks are mainly going to have negative effects, but there are some times where you'll get that second wind or some kind of bonus ability, which is nice. And the four events are very different. They all have different unique aspects to them as to how you're going to be placing cards down on the board. Uh, that being said, it's a cooperative game, right? And it also has a competitive nature, which is whoever has the bonus villain points at the end of the game, whoever has the most of these, is the winner overall. But realistically, in my opinion, now it's time for the review, <laughs> is I think that this is mainly a cooperative game. I enjoy playing it more cooperatively because at the cost of losing the game for somebody to get one bonus card as opposed to picking up something that we actually need in order to survive the game drives me nuts. Uh, but I do understand why you could add that competitive nature. For those of you who are more competitive in that aspect and you don't mind... Um, trying to win the game on your own, basically, as opposed to uh, uh, actually surviving the game itself, then that can be a benefit to you. But I prefer the uh, aspect of cooperation in these kind of games, specifically. It reminds me of, uh, I believe it's Sentinels of the Multiverse, as far as this game goes. It has a very similar appeal. This is actually playing as villains, right? And you're destroying the heroes, which is a nice little twist on the superhero genre. I haven't played a lot of games like these, and this was pretty fun. It's pretty simple to understand all the different aspects you can choose from based on your hand. You only have three different things you can do, right? Defense, uh, power, uh, and attack. Those are the three main things you get to do. The power is going to let you do certain things. And the d obstacles require different cards to be discarded. All the artwork is pretty cool. I like all the artwork. I'm like right, right in the middle with the artwork. It's solid. Um, I like the big board. I like all the different spaces on the board. I think it's all very, very simple as for, for what you can do and how you can do it on your turn. Um, Ferdinand Cardboard Stack was playing with us. He said he would like a little bit more options as, as opposed to the cards in his hand. He kind of suggested dice. Personally, for me, I thought it was I don't know how you would implement dice, first of all, but secondly, it worked pretty well with cards for me. I felt like there was enough things I could do. There's enough powers to buy, and those powers I can use to kind of, like, fulfill my hand size, uh, putting on things on the defense to stop cards from being discarded, and the power surges worked very nicely as well. I liked feeling like I was a superhero, or supervillain, and that supervillain could be kind of customized. Maybe I want to have, oh, I don't know, flight, or maybe even have super strength. So I had all the superhero powers along with my supervillain, who has a positive and negative effect. Most of them do, right? Um, but overall very fun game uh, very enjoyable it's it's light it's vibrant uh if you like cooperative games if you like games like sentinels this is definitely one i would definitely suggest checking out uh heroes or sorry villains and henchmen check out the description below on kickstarter all right guys thanks for watching the unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go and check out those videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment please it does help me do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out villains and henchmen so weird saying villains i'm so used to playing the good guys but this time it's bad guys also check out our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more if you want to win a game go ahead and check out our site we also have a bunch of new cool artwork which i'm super excited about uh as well as checking out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to invading the hero's base with you all next time